What's going on? I'm Hootie with Level Up Gaming, and in this video, I'm going to give you a crash course on anchoring in Rainbow Six Siege. So buckle up and get ready, because we're going to be moving through this fast. So what is an anchor? An anchor is someone who stays on or near the bomb site, basically as the last line of defense if the attackers end up pushing the bomb site. There are a few exceptions to this rule. At the beginning of rounds, an anchor might spawn peak, but make sure you're doing it safely and not dying, because an anchor is more useful alive than dead, as with any operator. And as an anchor, it can be helpful to your team for you to run off site and reinforce any hatches up above because this gives operators like Jaeger the chance to put down all of their equipment, three ADSs, two barbed wire, two reinforcements, and set up on the site before they start roaming. Just make sure that you get back to the site as quickly as possible just in case, you know, they find any hole in your defenses during the drone phase. So as an anchor, do you need to be directly on the bomb site? Not necessarily. Anchors can sometimes play off site in rooms adjacent to the bomb site but you typically want to make sure that you have a way to quickly and safely rotate back onto the bomb site if you do this. A good example of this is Maestro playing in Garage on Clubhouse. As you can see, I'm holding in a safe position as I cannot be shot from below. I'm able to watch the push up my stairs on my camera, kill any drones that try to come up the stairs, and I have a quick rotate back onto the bomb site if necessary. If you'd like to see other anchor setups on specific maps, let me know in the comments below. So you might be asking, what operators are good anchors? And it should be noted that you can pretty much play any operator as an anchor if it suits your personal playstyle. That being said, some operators are typically preferred to anchor over others due to their stats and gadgets. Now I'm sure what these operators can do will be a little bit of a review for some people, so I'm going to do my best to move through them as quickly and efficiently as possible. But stay tuned because we're going to look at and analyze some anchor gameplay later on in the video. First up, we've got Maestro. His gadget is most effective the longer the round goes on. The more drones you can kill or bomb plants you can prevent, the better. And remember, they can see through smoke for smoke plants. Because of this, and the fact that his LMG, the Alda, is incredibly powerful, he makes a great anchor. Legion is another operator that becomes more and more effective the longer he survives. Even though his gadget got a slight nerf, he is still insanely powerful and annoying, preventing potential plants in late round situations by sticking an enemy with a goo needle or just providing intel to his team with the sound cues that they provide. Next is Kaid, and yes, that is the correct pronunciation. Shame on you if you're saying Kate. Due to his stats and his gadget, you'll often find Kaid playing on site, electrifying walls or hatches, and sometimes even tricking them like Bandit. With access to the TCSG in its current state, he can be extremely intimidating, but it should be noted that the damage on the TCSG is planned on being reduced down to 55 from 83. So while it'll still be powerful, it won't be quite as strong as it currently is. Echo is a really interesting operator. His yokai drones are similar to Maestro's Evil Eyes in that they're worth more the longer they live in the round. And I have personally won many rounds with just my yokai drones stopping the plant. But not only can they stop a plant, they can provide extremely useful information to your team if strategically positioned. Wamai, or Whammy as I like to call him, is the anchor version of Jaeger essentially. The longer he's alive, the more magnets he can deploy, which will waste more throwable enemy utility. Combined with the ADSs from Jaeger, Wamai can be incredibly annoying and make it nearly impossible for the enemy team to get throwables into the objective. Then you've got Mira. Mira can be incredibly annoying. With her one-way glass mirror, she's great for gathering information around the bomb site and locking it down. The plus side is that once deployed, other operators can use her mirrors as well. Whether you set up a mirror for information to see through hard surfaces or for some cheeky peeks, she is great at locking down the bomb site. One of my favorite anchors is Smoke. He's one of the best operators for locking down an entrance and wasting time. Combined with a choke point and his trusty shotgun, he is a force to be reckoned with. Now that they've buffed the FMG9, he can also be extremely viable in non-choke point situations as well. His smoke can oftentimes bloom through walls and other objects, allowing him to deny plans and entry without having to expose himself. Warden's a tough one. If the enemy team isn't running heavy on smokes or running ying, there isn't really a reason to pick Warden. But if they're going for a smoke plant, then Warden is king, because he can see right through that smoke and take the planter out with ease. So be careful with your Warden pick, you can end up being useless. Next up are Rook and Doc, which are essentially the same operators with different gadgets. Some of the best spawn peekers in the game due to their weapon and scope choices, they also offer gadgets that come in handy in terms of support. Doc is arguably stronger than Rook due to being able to heal teammates and even pick them up from range when they are down but not out. While Castle's Ump is statistically the weakest gun in the game as of April 2020, his gadget can be incredibly useful for funneling en enemies in a certain direction and or wasting a even more utility. He is slightly more useful now that he has a super shorty as a secondary, 
but he still kind of sucks. And lastly, you have Tachanka. At the time of recording this video, Tachanka has not been reworked. He does not have his Molotov launcher or machine gun primary weapon that has been shown. He is the definition of an anchor with a deployable machine gun and is incredibly weak as an operator the higher you get in the ranks. If the changes that Ubisoft showed off at the 6th Invitational in 2020 are actually implemented, he will become a force to be reckoned with, so watch out. The king is back, baby. And now that we've gotten through all of those operators, let's analyze around where I play as an anchor successfully. In this clip, you will see we are playing on border on the top floor bomb site, and I'm playing a smoke. The team is doing a coordinated push from the CCTV balcony onto the bomb site, and my goal is to deny entry and plant as long as possible while staying alive to the best of my ability. By buying as much time as I possibly can, holding them out on the balcony and being annoying, I'm giving my team the opportunity to make a play and pick up some much needed kills. You'll notice that as my team dies, I realize I'm going to get sandwiched by the enemy team and I make a hasty escape to the bottom floor where I'll be able to watch through the floor below. This allows me the opportunity to retake the site if it comes down to that, instead of just going on defending alone while getting pushed from multiple angles. Unfortunately, at this point, it's just Cav and myself left, and they've taken the bomb site and gotten the diffuser planted. So I communicate to the Cav in Discord that I'm going to push up the stairs and she's going to push from CCTV so that we can pinch the remaining attackers together. Remember, anchoring doesn't need to be all or nothing. Go down with the ship is not our motto. If you have an escape route that can give you the opportunity to fall back and retake the bomb site with a teammate or two, then it's a valid option. Do it. As an anchor, communicating with your teammates is essential. Whether you're telling them where the push is coming from and who's pushing, or you're letting them know that you're falling back to retake the site with them. They can't help you if they don't know what you're doing. And sometimes you'll even find camera anchors such as Echo or Maestro playing far away from the bomb site with their character, but actually holding it with their gadgets, either preventing the information gathering with an evil eye or denying plants with a yokai drone. This can be a valid and useful strategy. Just remember not to get too caught up watching your gadget. Some things to remember before you go out there and become your team's dedicated support anchor. If you see your death coming, but can make an escape to get a second chance to retake the bomb site, do it. Have an escape plan. If you're trying to spawn peak, try to get back to the bomb site within 20 to 30 seconds of the round starting. And lastly, communicate to your team where you're getting pressured from so that they can flank or assist you. Playing Anchor is not for everyone, but subscribing to the Level Up Gaming YouTube channel is, so make sure you hit that big red subscribe button and I'll see you on the battlefield.